Well, childhood, I, I was sort of fascinated by electricity. And it wasn't really electronics in those days, it was electricity and electric trains and things like that. So from an early age of about six. And, and my you know, long-suffering sister uh, had to put up with my experiments on uh, you know, tin cans and string and, and uh, the little walkie-talkies. Um, and then uh, at, at school, um, I got involved with the uh, um, Signals Corps in the uh, Army Cadets. And that was my first introduction to, to radio, and, th and that just sort of caught my, caught my imagination, and, and uh, it all went from, from there. Well, I suppose, I mean, first of all, I was a child of the Apollo era. I, I, I watched the moon landings when I was sort of 16, 17, and, and you know, the combination of, of radio and uh, space travel and everything just, just uh, sort of set me alight. Um, but w what I then wanted to do was to be part of that, and I couldn't be an astronaut in those days. Uh, it was too, too far-fetched. So I, I thought I'd get involved in tracking satellites. But in order to do that, I actually needed to have help because I couldn't do it all by myself and so I guess the sort of early leadership experiences were, were trying to muster people to uh, volunteer to work with me to do what it was that I actually was trying to achieve and, and of course you know, uh, managing volunteers is, is about the most difficult thing that you can do. And you learn a lot that way. So the combination of, of some of the, the training in the, in the, in the cadets uh, and then that really is what sort of brought me into that area. No, not at all. I, mean, I think the only thing I knew when I was at university is that I wanted to do electronics and radio in particular. And I wasn't quite sure how to do that. Um, and I, I spent a, a, a year in industry working in, in the aerospace defence industry and I think that taught me that that was not what I wanted to do. Um, I found that very sort of constricting and, and so I went back to university to, to do a PhD. Um, it wasn't a PhD in space, it was a PhD in, in very terrestrial electronics and radio. <laughs> But in my spare time, when I should have been doing more of my PhD, I, I started to build a, a little tracking stations to receive the then Soviet and, and NOAA spacecraft, which was, a, I mean, nowadays it's sort of everybody does that, but then it was pretty exotic. Um, and in order to do that, I needed help, so I had to really get a team of folk around me who, who sort of got inspired by the same thing. Well, I suppose, you know, formally, it probably was when we started to build our first microsatellite, uh, because that needed a team of people, and, and they were all volunteers. They were students, and they were staff members, so there were some people who were more senior than I, as well as my con uh, contemporaries. And it was trying to bring all of that together to, to build what was then considered a pretty crazy idea, because small satellites were not thought of as being of any use whatsoever, even if we could succeed in building it. Um, and also coming here to, to, to Washington uh, to try to persuade NASA to launch it for free. So it was a very interesting experience, because it was having to deal with people in a way more junior, uh, my contemporaries, and people who were actually very much my senior. And, and that was a very interesting, looking back, that was a very interesting experience. Well, assuming they're coming to, to, to do a job in, 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 in satellites, you know, the, the first, the thing that I look for is, are they, do they have a passion? Are they interested in it? Is it just another job to them? Or is there a spark there that says, I want to do this for whatever reason? So, and, and there are different reasons. Some people get fascinated by the technology. Some get fascinated by the applications. Uh, you know, some are just sort of fascinated from the sort of science fiction background and so forth. But if they have that passion, then actually that counts for an awful lot. Now, of course, they have to have a certain set of skills. But once you get over a certain threshold of those skills, it's that passion and interest which will take them through the hard times, which will make them pay attention to detail because space is very unforgiving and you need people who are really going to sort of give their all to it and, and that's something that I look for. In fact, you know, more than pure technical capability, although of course that's important at a certain level. I suppose it's also an, an ability to communicate 
um, ideally, although you know, some of the best people are very poor communicators, even to their, f their compatriots. But you know, an ideal person would be someone who, who not only is enthusiastic, but who can, can make that enthusiasm infectious and inspire people. But you rarely find that all in one person. Well, it's a difficult one because I've, you know, I've had a lot of uh, students come up and ask exactly that from, from different countries. Um, and, and my question is, well, what, why do you want to do this? If you want to do this to make money, from my personal perspective, there are easier ways to do that. You can open a restaurant, you can sell TVs or shoes or sandwiches, you know, things that people want all the time. Satellites are sort of luxury goods. Uh, it is changing a little bit with a new space environment, but it's still a, a pretty exotic area. So um, you know, my advice would be, whatever you do, do something that you're interested in. Because if you're interested and you know, to a greater or lesser extent passionate about it, when the times are tough, which you will experience, then that will carry you through. If it's just another job because it's sort of those things, then, then you know, that's not likely to have the same effect. Now you can't always be lucky and find a job that's as enthralling, but you know, in space actually it is. I'm not sure I can give you a, a, a terribly useful answer because it's one of those things that it just sort of happens. Um, I think if you're interested in people and you care about people, and I think this is one of the things that I've tried throughout the evolution of our, our company, is we often refer to it as a sort of family enterprise. And that's because we, we value not just the contribution but that, that our, my colleagues make, but, but also their sort of sense of satisfaction. And I think the you know, leadership lessons, it's looking after people. Because you know, satellites are easy, people are difficult, and the satellites don't build themselves, so you have to learn how to get the best out of people. And I think the one lesson that I, I learned from actually a professor who, when I was a student, had on his door, it was a, a quote uh, reputedly from Oppenheimer, it said that you can get anything done providing you don't mind who takes the credit. And I've always believed in that, and, and, and therefore, you know, when things go well, sharing the credit is important. When things don't go too badly, then you need to step up in front and say, yep, you know, I have to carry the can. Well, I hope they're proud, mainly because we've sort of, again, prided ourselves in, in, in trying to be innovative and doing new things first. In the days at the very beginning of the microsatellite era, you know, people said that microsatellites, A, were impossible and certainly were of no use and, and so on. Then later, people, uh, colleagues could see how they were gradually put into real use. And over, you know, by, over the course of several decades, gradually increased their capabilities so that, so that now they, in many ways, compete with the larger satellites for many applications and then always uh, supplant them, but in many cases they do, rather like the, the PC supplanted the supercomputer for most day-to-day -day applications. And I think you know, the, my colleagues in the company get great satisfaction from that. And also the applications that some of our satellites do in terms of uh, humanitarian disaster relief and, and education and enabling some of the emerging uh, economies to take their first steps in space. Actually meeting people, to be honest. I mean, there, I think there are two, two things that, 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 that really give me satisfaction. One is when we've had a new idea, technical idea, it, it could be in many areas, seeing that put into action, having a satellite launch, seeing the first high quality pictures from space, or as we did just recently, a net in capturing debris, space debris, and, and bringing it back down to the earth sort of things are, it definitely give, a, give you a, a high degree of satisfaction. And then the other satisfaction is having a, a really good team of people around you who, who are all, you know, I mean, they don't always get on themselves, you know, amongst themselves there's always a bit of friction which is always good, but when it comes down to it they get great satisfaction from, from working together as a team and achieving more than anybody could do individually.